better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and I am joined once again by Venom Unleashed, aka Venom Balor, Randy. Dude, thank you so much for making time and being on the show with me again. Of course. Always look forward to it. I, yeah, and, always, and I... Oh, go always ahead. fun. Always fun. <laughs> Always. Oh, yeah. It's always a good time. Even when you and I aren't feeling well or we're going through some stuff, I feel like these always cheer me up, and, I, and I'm so grateful to have you again. And we're going to do more of this. So those of you out there watching and listening, um, definitely we're going to... Randy and I are going to team up again and follow the Ben and Kane storyline. So today... Uh, actually Venom is going to Venom Unleashed is going to reveal to me some things that happened in Dark X-Men number four, because I didn't get to read that one yet. And I will definitely go read it after this. Um, but I want to hear your thoughts on it and kind of give us a setup because the main thing we're going to talk about today is web of Spider-Man number one. So I'm really looking forward to diving into this because you are the reason I got this book. <laughs> I think I told you before the stream, like I read, I wasn't going to read it. I was going to skip it and wait for the pages to get, you know, put in a trade paperback at some point, but you sent me a page from it and I said, all right, I'll get it. <laughs> and so uh, so I, I did, and here we are. So before we get into Web of Spider-Man number one, which has a lot of talented people that worked on it, um, let's dive into Dark X-Men number four real quick. And, you know, let me know your thoughts and kind of what happened in that book. And we are going to give them some spoilers here for Dark X-Men number four and Web of Spider-Man number one. So if you haven't read them, go do that and come back. But yeah, please do tell me. Uh, hit me up with uh, some of the events that happened in Dark X-Men four. Okay, so pretty much Dark, Dark X-Men four, what it is, it's like it's... um. The, the X-Men characters that's in it, they're, they're kind of like, well, dead. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, um, they're like, uh, it's almost like alternate reality versions. Okay. And they're, they were going to be their own team. Okay. Uh, going forward, I don't think it's really going to work out with all the new titles coming out. But <laughs> Sure. <laughs> uh, so the whole plan was they were going to break out Chasm and try to recruit him for the team. Okay. So, um, and one of the reasons why is the the new powers that he has, um, they're going along the line saying that it's a mutation. So he could be a part of an X-Men team. Um, you know, like that, 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 okay. like that glow, that, that <laughs> teal, teal greenish glow that comes off of him and he can use. Sure. They're saying that yeah. when he fell on that stuff that where he become chasm, they're saying, uh -huh. they're saying that it mutated him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, well, yeah, I guess it, it had to on some level, but oh, interesting, but not like an X gene. He doesn't have an X gene. No. So. No. Uh, okay. All right. So that's, so that's kind of the setup in that issue. Is there like, or that's the reason they want to recruit him, I guess. Yeah. So what it was is they go and they break him out mm -hmm. uh, of, he had this certain area where he was and they break him out and they're trying to recruit him. And pretty much he's like, he's like, F that. I don't, I don't need this. And so he take he takes off on his own. So okay. it, it, there's there's not too too much to it, okay. um, you know. But that's I guess that's just the way that they got him out from where he from his confinement. So yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, well now I'm I'm a little lost because uh, but but I guess that makes sense because that kind of ties into Web of Spider Man. So all right, so Dark X Men number four. If you're out there collecting everything Ben Riley, you got to pick up that issue because. That deals with essentially his escape from his initial room that he was in on the tree or whatever, right? Right, right. Okay, okay, gotcha. Okay, so that makes a little bit more sense. Now that makes sense. So then in going into Web of Spider-Man number one, which, like I said, this came out, it's pretty much acts as a, a precursor for future Spider-Man stories that are coming out this year across multiple Spider-Man titles. So, of course, you got Zeb Wells with a story that deals with Tombstone. Um, you got a Miles Morales story where he's fighting vampires by Cody Ziegler, um, and that is uh, going to tie into Blood Hunt, which is coming out in May. Um, then you got Steve Fox wrote a Spider-Woman story, which is only two two or three pages, really short. Um, but I, I don't know what that's going to tie into. I think it said it in the book, but I think they're just setting up some cool Spider-Woman stuff. But then, of course, we get... Um, you know, like another, uh, like a Peter Parker and Miles story uh, that ties into Spectacular Spider-Man, um, which is cool by Greg Wiseman. I'm glad he's coming back to write Spider-Man. That's really cool. I read the first issue and I was, you know, so-so on it. 
Uh, but I know Greg Wiseman's a talented writer, so I'm sure it'll get stronger. Um, and then we had a Alex Segura story with uh, Aranya and Spider-Man 2099, which is funny because Alex recently wrote a novel that starred those two characters. So I'm sure he was like, hey, you know, I'd like my novel to be in the multiverse continuity. How do I do that? How do I pull it into the comic world? I- I'm guessing because there was some similarities there. If you've read, I read that novel because I'm a 2099 fan. Um, so, but those are other stories you can find in the book. So definitely check it out. Uh, we're not going to talk about those today because we're going to focus on just three stories that follow characters that you and I have been talking about, you know, and been interested in since I started this show, which is Norman Osborn and kind of his new journey that he's going on. So we'll start with him. And then we also have a Ben Riley story, short story that's in here and a Kane story. Uh, which I know got you and I very excited. <laughs> and that was the image you sent me that I was like, okay, I'm going to buy this now because you yeah. got me to pick up Spider-Man number seven, I think it was, with Spider-Boy, its first appearance, but that also had the return of Kane in exactly. it. Yeah. yeah, so so all right, let's start with Norman because this story, I don't know, I am I like the journey that Norman's on. I know it's going to end. That's probably why I'm into it is because I'm like, all right, this is going to end at some point. He'll probably become bad again at some point. But it's still neat seeing him trying to do good things. So in this story, he there's still one of the Insidious Six Madeline Pryor creations that wasn't brought to justice, and he's after them. So kind of tell me your perspective on this, because I think Zeb Wells wrote this and Ed McGinnis drew it. So uh, what, what was your thoughts on this one? Um, I mean, it definitely ties in. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and it, it, it has been a very interesting story with Norman, him being, you know, uh, a hero and trying so hard to stay away from uh, his goblin, his green goblin past, uh, right? you know, and some of the things that's went on between him and Peter, um, all I'm going to say is Zeb Wells sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no um, kidding. I really don't like the Amazing Spider-Man book. I mean, it has moments like with Tombstone and some of that stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, this is all right. But then he gets into that stuff, and I'm like, God, it's so bad. Like, it's so bad. Dude, they had they had Peter become uh, the uh, what spider goblin or a goblin before, <laughs> and now they're doing it again. Like, well, it's yeah. To me, it seems like Zeb Wells's version of Superior Spider Man, where it's like, oh, Spider Man became is Doctor Octopus Spider Man. You know, now it's Spider Man Goblin, and it's like. Okay. Yeah. Uh, great. Uh, just a sea of ideas over there. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's not very popular amongst the, the fans right now. It's go read ultimate Spider-Man. That's a really good book. Oh dude. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was like, that was a, a, a right hook at, out of nowhere. Oh, I was like, man. I was like, you're telling me the ultimate Spider-Man book <laughs> is killing it uh, with everything we've always wanted to see actual growth with the character and maturity from the character. It's, it's, Go read Ultimate Spider Man because I don't want to. I don't want to, you know, complain about Zeb Wells all day. But I really just I'm I defended that guy in this show numerous times with like Dark Origin and other things that I've liked him writing, but uh, and Spider Man in the past. But man, this run is just not it in my opinion. No oh, man, oh my god! <laughs> but this Goblin story was cool because Norman takes down a Goblin. It's you know a, an actual Goblin, not a person in a costume from the Insidious Six that uh, Madeline Pride created. And he takes him down and, and delivers him back to Madeline, leaves him at her doorstep, which I was like, such a Norman move where he's just like, hey, clean up your trash, lady. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but still being Norman, like where he's trying to do good, but still has that little bit of Norman in him, that pompousness, which an arrogance I like. So, yeah, I don't know. It was a cool little short story. I like Ed McGinnis's art. I really wish it wasn't being wasted on mediocre to bad Spider-Man stories right now. Um, but I do like his art a lot. I, I don't know. Are you a fan of his stuff? Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I love this guy. His Superman Batman run with uh, Jeff Loeb was really good. I liked, um, and he's done a lot of cool stuff. He's a great artist. I just, I really just don't like that Spider Man book. Uh, but, uh, but that aside, because you know, now that we know Norman, because his miniseries wrapped up, and I think there was a character who died in it that he tried to save, and then there was someone else who almost died and he did save. So there's a lot of growth that, uh, like, I think Christopher Cantwell, I think, was writing the miniseries for Norman. So there was a lot there. Uh, with that character um, that they're growing with. And it, it seems like Zeb and them are going to do something with them with the new, you know, with their book, but I'm probably, I'm going to have to find out through fans because I'm not going to read it myself. I can't support that book anymore, but a book that I am interested in supporting is this summer. We're going to get chasm uh, like a, a cane mini series curse of cane. And, uh, and that is what these next two short stories kind of set up. So 
Dude, talk to me about Ben. What happens in this chasm short story that was written in this book, um, which I think comes from Steve Fox also and art by Greg Land. Uh, so pretty much it picks up where um, he escapes and um, he's still in the underworld, um, but he's trying to find a way out. He's trying to get to a portal. Mm -hmm. um, and the goblins are trying to capture him for Madeline. Right. And, um, and he's just not, he's not going to have it. He, he's been on again on his new powers. He's been perfecting them. He's like really, really tough now. Like he was always tough in my eyes, but mm -hmm. like he, like it even more now. So he pretty much, you know, he whips all of them except for this giant goblin that like hits him one time and sends him flying. He's like, Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He shuts that down real quick. Yeah. yeah. So, but he, he makes it out, um, you know, and so um, when Norman drops off that goblin, um, he drops it off to, he drops it off to uh, Havoc, which is right. Madeline Pryor's boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Um, boy, boy toy. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, um, but, uh, yeah, pretty much they're trying to get Chasm back, and ultimately Madeline decides, you know what, just whatever, let's let it be, let him do whatever, you know, just let him, you know, find his own way or whatever. She don't want to put any more effort into him because, I mean, he's not going to give up. He's, he's going to get out one way or the other. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because, like, I understand the the writing constraints of someone who's like, Hey, okay, you got to tell an eight page story or a six page story in this book. And here's the purpose. You got to get Ben Riley out of the capture of, of, uh, you know, Madeline Pryor. It was already set up previously. So you just need to do the final stretch. Right. And really the only way he gets out is if either you kill Madeline Pryor or knock her out to where she can't recapture him immediately. Or you do this where she's just like, you know what? He's not worth the effort, you know, like I, I'm, I'm, we got a lot of X-Men stuff going on right now. We got a lot of things. My, I got my hands in a lot of different pots and balancing a lot. And I, this guy wants to get out, like nothing we've done has rehabilitated him or nothing. And so, you know what? His story is his now to tell, and I'm going to uh, let him go. And I'm like, okay, I get, I mean, yeah, you can look some, I'm sure could look at that as lazy writing. I even thought that at first when I first read through it, but then I was like, well, what would I do in this in Steve Fox's shoes trying to do this story. I'm like, you, you can't hurt Madeline. She's going to be probably a big part of the ending of whatever this X-Men story is they're telling. So you, you kind of, you kind of have to do this. <laughs> There's no other way. Um, and, uh, and I, I, I guess it works. I mean, f it, it works fine enough to where I'm not going to complain about it. Like she's, she's over this guy, <laughs> like running around beating up her henchmen and stuff. She's like, you know what? If he doesn't want to be here, fine. Let him go. And as long as, you know, last time he only took over New York City because of me, I'm obviously not going to help him do that again. So he's not going to be able to do it on his own, probably. So screw it. But I think that's her also underestimating the brain that's inside him because he still does have a Peter Parker level brain inside yeah. of him. Yeah. So he could still cause a lot of damage if he wanted to. Um, so, um, so what uh, for me, uh, yeah. like her reasoning for letting him go, yeah, she, yeah. Actually, she actually says it in, in, the, in the story there. Uh, the main reason she lets him go is because she got her memories back and he didn't. Right. So, oh, yeah, right. So this could so, be a way for him to go and complete right. that. Right. She, yeah, she, yeah. Wants, she wants him to get his memories back. She wants him to be him. She wants him to be, you know, Ben Riley again and not Chasm. Which is so funny because if she was a halfway decent person, she could have gone to like Reed Richards or she could have gone to anybody in the Marvel Universe that is Doctor Strange, you know, dealing with magic. She could have gone to a number of people to find a way to get his memories back while she, while he was in her capture. And now, granted, he might have resisted on some level, but I also don't know why he would. Uh, and I know his girlfriend had a miniseries recently too, Hallow's Eve, which I didn't read, but I heard there was a, a part Dude. in it. That Dude. deal deals with the chasm a little bit as well. Dude. Yeah, oh my god. Is it Hello, Hello's Eve. Oh. I love her, man. Oh Do you god. really? Okay. Yes. All right. Oh That's... Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. You need uh -huh. to, you need to pick up her mini series, dude. Well, when it comes out in trade, I'll probably buy it on Kindle because it'll be like six bucks or seven bucks. So I I'll buy it then for sure. But um yeah, we did talk about that character a little bit, Janine, and uh, and I kind of did wonder what happened to her. And then I saw she had a mini, and I'm like, 
oh, and on one of the covers, it's her in Chasm. So I'm like, eh, all right, I guess for my Ben Riley, you know, chron- chronological order reading, I probably should cover that book at some point. Yeah, it, it, it's good. They, they did very well. Them introducing her as Hallow's Eve in Amazing Spider-Man uh, 14. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Excellent. And then okay. it, into her miniseries. Yeah. It, it's such a unique, original idea. And her look. I love her look. I'm already a big horror fan anyway. Yeah, sure. Sure, you sure. So, she, she's the one that just has like the masks, right? And she and so she becomes like the Universal yeah, Monsters, like, basically. Uh, Frankenstein becomes, and all them. Put on a, Frank, a Frankenstein mask or a yeah. Wolfman mask, and she yeah. becomes a werewolf man. Right. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's it's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Well, then on your on your recommendation, then I'll, at some point I'll check it out. And if anyone out there has any opinions about the stories we're talking about so far, Dark X Men Four, the two short stories so far, or that miniseries, let me know down below because I know there's still like the Mary Jane and Black Cat miniseries. We never, I never covered the last two issues. So I might do like a mega episode where I talk about how all Hallows Eve miniseries, the last two Norman uh, gold goblin miniseries uh, issues and the Mary Jane and black cat and just do them all in one and call it like the, um, the dark, what was that? D- the crossover dark web epilogue. Yeah. Like I'll probably, I'll probably do something like that at some point when it, when that comes out in trade. So yeah, be on the lookout. I'll give my opinions in, but uh, based on your recommendation, dude, I, when I see you get excited for something, even if I don't fully agree, I'm like, well, I love your passion. So I'm like, all right, I'll give it a shot. That's worth to me. That's worth the price of anything. A good friend recommending something is worth the price of checking anything out to me. She, she is definitely worth it, dude. She is, okay. a char- she is a character that has a, like a mainstay appeal. Well, I'm glad they did something with her because, like, like when they brought her back during that um that storyline where Ben Riley, you know, became Spider Man again for a short time, um, before he became Chasm, like, you know, he uh he did say like, you know, I'm I just want to uh I just want my girlfriend out. That was like the first thing he did when he took the job as Spider Man, and they went and got her out, and I was really happy about that because it was cool to see that character again because I honestly thought Marvel forgot about her, and uh and so the fact that they're doing something with her, even if it's like it seems kind of silly to me. I still like, uh, you know, I still like to do something with the character. So that's cool. Thanks for that feedback. Cause I'm, uh, you know, maybe I'm a little bit more interested in, and my curiosity has peaked a little bit more to check out her mini series. Oh, it, it, it's good. dude. It, it, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Um, actually, um, um, yeah, you really should because it actually leads up to dark X-Men four because during that okay. mini, during her mini series, Mm-hmm. She tries. She tries to break out being by herself. See, that's. I thought I read that in the synopsis of one of the issues. So okay, so so she she's not successful, but Ben does get out, as we see in this short story here. Um, and I wonder if he'll go right to Janine. I I would actually like that uh, for them. Um, and Janine, remember, up until she became Hallow's Eve, she was still trying to get him to, you know, be Ben and like get his memories back. Um, and she still kind of wants that, but now she's she's become jaded again. You know, she tried to go live a normal life and leave Ben and she just, people hated her. They knew about her past and, and they started judging her and it led her right back to Ben. She's like, you know what? You're right. This, these people, they're not worth saving. So I'm really curious because Ben is a character I, I root for, but I'll be honest, ever since they brought him back as the Jackal, uh, which Dan Slott did, which I hate. Um, I, I haven't liked Ben really, except in that one time where he was Spider-Man briefly, I was like, okay, I'm digging this. And then he became chasm and I, I don't like him anymore. And I'm, I'm slowly stopping rooting for him uh, because it's clear to me. Marvel doesn't care on some level that of like the, the type of person Ben was, they see him as a character that, Hey, we could, it's kind of like DC did this with Roy Harper for a little bit over at DC where they go, this is a version of green arrow, or this is a version of Spider-Man that we can do things that we can't do to Spider-Man. So let's do them. And it's like, well, I get the need for that, but there's so many other spider characters and there's a multiverse of spider characters now. So to me, I'm like, why couldn't you just leave Ben alone? Um, yeah. So um, I don't know. It, it's, I don't know. I could, uh, you know, fanboy and, and rant about that all day. But the fact is that, you know, I don't see this Ben as the original Ben, even though they try to dance lot, try to come up with an explanation that it's the original Ben. I just I don't buy it. I don't feel like the original Ben would would become Chasm, in my opinion. Um, uh, if he had his memories, he wouldn't have. Um, I mean, I guess so. You know, 
Yeah. But um, I mean, still, it's it's Ben. You know, I'm I'm always going to pull for Ben. Um, you know, and um, to to hit on something you said earlier about Balan Pryor, you know, not trying to help him get his memories back when mm-hmm. she could. Yeah. You, you brought up Doctor Strange. Yeah. Ben Riley has a past with Doctor Strange. Yes. During yep. the uh, damnate damnation storyline. Yeah, yeah. He in that, the that, Vegas. That, they could have fit that in there so easily. Yeah, I know. Well, he also ran into Doctor Strange again when he was Spider-Man temporarily, um, right before Chasm. There was a Doctor Strange one-off special, and it had him and Ben team up in it um, with Ben in the new Spider-Man costume. So, and they referenced Damnation in that issue too. So, yeah, there's there is that there. <laughs> it's like I I hate that when there's a convenience of like where they forget that they can solve some problems for these characters. And and they choose to ignore them to create more problems for them. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't see that as like a that to me is not. Yeah, I, I would have brought Doctor Strange in and maybe had that fail, and then you could have Ben escape yeah. and tell your Ben story, you know. But again, I understand I understand the page count limit that Steve Fox had here. So, but he did. Steve did continue to write in this issue. He did the Spider Woman one. He did this story, and then he ended though with the Kane story, which also had Greg Land artwork. So let's let's shift real quick over because I'm going to keep going down a spiral of hating what they do with Ben. <laughs> so let's talk about something I do like is that they brought Kane back and they put him in his Texas Scarlet Spider costume, <laughs> which is yep. really cool. So tell me your thoughts on that uh, short story at the end of this book. OK, well, one thing I'm going to say is I believe mm-hmm. um, one of the covers to this issue I got on the front cover. Um, it's got uh, Scarlet Spider on the front of the cover, mm-hmm. okay, and he's with um, oh my god, um, Kingpin and somebody else. But anyway, I think that they might have Kane switch over to the original Scarlet Spider costume. Oh, like the blue sweatshirt and everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I don't care either way. I, I like him in both. So, that I mean, that would be cool. That would be kind of poetic in a way for Chasm to fight, you know, someone in his costume. Yeah. Uh, that that could work, too. I liked when uh, Kane fought Craven the Hunter in the Scarlet Spider costume. Yeah. Back during, back during his run by Chris Dude. Yost. Yeah, yeah that, that was awesome. That was wild because, <laughs> because at the time, Ben was dead. Yes, and they had that, and he was on the cover as Scarlet Spider, and I was like, "Whoa, what's this?" Yeah, yeah you're like, "Oh my God, they're bringing Ben back, and he's evil," or, you know. And I'm like, "I gotta read this," and then you read it, and it was Craven. I'm like, "Okay, that's cool too, because that also fits Craven." And they, because J. M. Demetrius created that short story during the resurrection of Craven, where Craven met Kane many years ago, it's yeah. like he he created a backstory for it so that it paid off in that Chris Yost run. So. Yeah, just really cool. Like they've done a lot of cool stuff with Kane, and he's that character that he, he's actually now the one on top that I root for. And who in the beginning I was like, all right, I have empathy for him as a clone of Peter Parker that's like a failed clone and he's dying. But now that he's Scar- when he became Scarlet Spider, I was like, oh man, I love him as Scarlet Spider. And then when he was in the Ben Riley Scarlet Spider series, I re- root was rooting for him because I didn't like what they were doing with Ben. And then now that he's back and he was missing for all these years and he got the knife or whatever, and, and he's back in our timeline, I'm like, and he wants to go find Ben. He's like, I went right to the sewers. I, you know, Madam Webb told me this is where, she, you know, he went I'm down here and he runs into freak and he runs in these other villains. So, you know, like that are not Spider-Man villains typically. And, uh, and I kind of like the path they're going on, but I like that Kane immediately was like, oh, Ben got out of his imprisonment. I got to go find him. You know, like he, like nothing else matters. That's how he was in the Ben Riley, Peter David Scarlet Spider book, and that's how he's been ever since the Jackal story. Is that he's like, I'm, um, I am Ben's keeper, whether he wants me to be or not. And if Ben won't let me be his keeper and he can't be saved, I got to be the one who puts him down. And uh, and I so I can't wait to see that play out in the miniseries. What do you think? I think that it'll ultimately end up um, with Ben getting his memories back. But I hope so. He may still continue to be chasm, but be like a hero. Okay. Um, I because I'm gonna I'm gonna say honestly, like the new powers that he's got, I think I think that's pretty unique. And I love I love his costume. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I saw the toy not too long ago at Target, and I don't really buy Marvel Legends stuff anymore unless it's like a Moon Knight or something. But I, I saw it and I was like, 
okay yeah that's a cool costume <laughs> like there like it, it really does look cool like I, at first i kind of didn't i didn't like it i railed against it and then it started to grow on me depending on the artist but then when i saw the toy i was like i love the colors it's so anti spider-man yeah in a lot of ways but in like interesting ways like uh yeah, yeah. and I, it's cool when they released that figure i pre-ordered that thing dude i had that i nice. actually i actually had that delivered like a day or two before the release date cool so yeah i i, I was like i'm i'm on this right here now they have a uh a legends figure of hello's eve as well i know i saw i saw her at the store i saw him and i saw ben riley scarlet spider um at the store and i was like it's tempting but i just don't collect i actually sold all my venom and spider-man figures uh, not you know when ace was getting sick so uh i was like yeah i don't have any of this stuff anymore i can't start a new collection um but they are cool they are very cool yeah. so do you have hallows eve and everything oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> that's cool well hopefully she uh, hopefully she's in the mini series that's coming up um and uh and I, I i'll be honest and i'll tell everyone here like we talked about this before but we are going to cover that series so when the issues come out we'll wait for issues one and two to come out and then me and you will do another episode like this that's like you know 30 minutes to 45 minutes and we'll discuss and review the first two issues. Um, and then when issues three and four come out, we'll do the same thing. Cause I think it's only a four issue mini series. Um, so, uh, but yeah, uh, what is it? Chasm curse of Cain. Cool yeah. title, cool title. It's a, uh, and you know, Cain and Abel type storyline. And the fact that Cain is the hero in this one and chasm Ben is like kind of the villain. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see where it goes. And, and I, I do hope for a happy ending for Ben, even though I don't really see this Ben as the original Ben. Cause I just thought I don't like Dan slot sloppy way of explaining how it's the original one when it, can, it can't be, um, you could have done it way easier if, if Dan slot could have done it way easier where it was when Ben got knocked out and Peter got knocked out way back in, you know, the original clone or the nineties clone saga, you know, they wake up and, you know, Peter's looking at Ben you could easily say that that Ben was a clone of, you know, of, of the Ben that's been going through the series, the 90 series and the real Ben Norman kept him like in a vault somewhere. And you could have been like, yeah, okay. So right just at the end, he made a flash clone of Ben Riley who had Ben Riley's memories and that clone died. You could easily, that could have been a way to explain it. But instead Dan Slott's like, no, we took the dust and brought it back and killed him again and created his memories. And, I'm just like, that's so over <laughs> unnecessary, like to, to explain Ben's resurrection, but Hey, it's comics, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. So any last thoughts on web of Spider-Man number one? Cause like I said, you're the reason I read it and I, I will say I'm not disappointed overall. I, I will say some of those stories are setting up stuff that I don't care about. I am going to read blood hunt because I'm, I'm a big blade fan and a vampire fan. Um, and I like the new moon Knight character hunters moon. He got introduced in the last series and he's kind of one of those characters, him and Tigra, that I really kind of started liking a lot more because of the Jed McKay book. So I'm going to read Blood Hunt, and I will read this Kane miniseries with Ben, but nothing else I'm going to probably dive into. What about you? Um, well, I'm always sticking with Venom, um, yeah. which also uh, crosses over into Blood Hunt. Um, yes, with uh, Lee Price is coming back. Yeah. For two that, issues. Yeah, two, two <laughs> issues, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Yay. <laughs> Lee, Lee Pace is actually supposed to, um, Lee Price, I mean, yeah. uh, is supposed to be a part of the Venom War. Um, and he's oh. actually going to be on the hero's side. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I guess we got to read those two issues where he's a vampire and then maybe becomes human again or something. Yeah. Um, uh, they, he is going to be a part of the Venom War. Mm -hmm. um, and he is, he's with, um, well, he's with, like with Dylan all, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's with all, all the, the 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 symbiote heroes. Right, the uh, ones trying to stop Eddie and Meridius. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, gotcha. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, he's going to be a part of that. I don't know how they're going to get there, but he is one hundred percent. You know. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing where they're going with Venom. Because yeah. I mean, they're actually making headway now. Like it's actually from story to story, things are actually happening now. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I think I feel like Al Ewing is probably in his last year, maybe on the book, possibly because a lot of things are wrapping up. They explained the Kang, the Conqueror relationship already in one of those issues, and 
they're now they're doing a carnage crossover and then they're building up to venom war so i don't know if venom war is his end point or if he's going to do something after venom war but i imagine he's probably in his last year or so of this run uh, i i would guess i mean who knows maybe not i don't know what the sales are on that book i don't i don't think they're near what they were when donny cates wrote the book so i don't know if this was an overall success of uh keeping the venom brand you know up there but it i, I know it's not a, a badly sold book either so no, it, you know it, it sales it actually sells pretty good okay not as, not as good as donnie's yeah but it, but it still does pretty well it it's you know, people still pick it up. People are looking forward to seeing what happens. You know, um, I, me, myself, I like the idea, like right now, of Eddie um, having Bedlam as the symbiote. Yeah, um, okay. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. I like that pretty well. I love how they brought in Doctor Doom, how they introduced, yeah. how that the untold story in Lethal Protector led into the current series. Yes. Um, I really like that a lot. Uh, er- everybody, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't like Dr. Doom. I mean, I hope not. Cause that's my favorite <laughs> villain. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, to have him in there, part of that and Kang as well, yeah. he's got things going on with carnage, you know? And I mean, and, and I honestly, I, I do like, uh, you know, like Eddie with, with Bedlam right now, like there's, there's two different Bedlam's. Yes, right, there's, yeah. There's yeah. an evil Bedlam. And the right, evil Bedlam the, is, the Eddie, Eddie one. Eddie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool because Eddie's the anomaly, right? He's outside of time right now, kind of. Yeah. Um, so he kind of broke time in a way by by the constant. But uh, but definitely when the trades come out, I'll pick them up. So when the Carnage crossover comes out, I'll definitely review that here. One book that I am going to review here monthly, though, is uh, I went back all the way back when we started the Venom vlog. I used to get the, the um, Mike Costa run of Venom in the mail. Uh, from issue 150 onwards, I was getting them in the mail, and we were reviewing them as they came in the mail. So I will have Spider uh, Spider Man um, Venom Separation Anxiety, the new miniseries that's coming out oh, that, oh, that oh, takes oh, place oh, in the past that has our guy Sandoval on it. Yes. Um, and uh, and I, I'm interested because it's it's Venom versus the Purple Man, who is a really vile and grotesque villain from Jessica Jones and other characters. So I'm. I'm really excited to read this now because the Dr. Doom one, I kind of liked, I it had some moments that I didn't, but I love the, I loved uh, Fareed Karami's artwork. Um, and I love our uh, Fareed's artwork. I loved his stuff and I can't wait to see Sandoval on this one and them lose the lethal protector, you know, name finally. And it looks like they're going to try to do a couple separation anxiety miniseries. So where the symbiote and Eddie split and the symbiote bonds to other people. So we're going to get more lore from the nineties added in here and, uh, by David Michelini and I'm I'm on board. So you will see me review those monthly because they're going to come in the mail monthly to my house. Oh, that's awesome, dude. That's <laughs> and then we'll, awesome. we'll we'll have to talk about it too at some point uh, after it's all said and done. But um, all right, well let's wrap this up because uh, Web of Spider Man number one. If you're out there and you haven't bought it yet, if you want to know and see kind of the setup of a lot of Spider Man stories that are going to happen this year, definitely go pick it up. It's a key issue for that reason. But if you're a Ben collector or a Kane collector or a Norman collector or anything like that, or Spider-Man 2099 collector, all those characters, Miles, everyone is in this. Peter Parker, everybody is in this one issue. Madam Web even too. Um, so if you're a fan of the movie, which none of you are, I'm sure, uh, the, you could pick this issue up uh, because they're setting up Madam Web to be a big part of whatever big story they're going to tell at some point. So um, yeah. So uh, what else, man? Any, any last words before we head out? Yeah, um, there's going to be a couple things here. Uh, one thing um, that people seem to have overlooked is hmm. Venom 25, where he goes back in time with uh, Dr. Doom, and he meets up with Peter Parker after he literally had just become Spider-Man. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, during that little meeting there, um, what they hinted at is when they're talking and... Eddie's upset, you know, with everything that's going on, and he he, he takes his anger out on a wall. He turns yeah. around and punches a wall. Yeah. Well, the Venom logo, the Venom symbol is on his back, on his yeah. jacket, the black yeah, yeah. and white. Mm-hmm. That is where Peter Parker got the idea for the design from Secret Wars. Yeah, I mean, I talked about that in my review of that issue, and I... Uh, 
uh, yeah, I guess that that does make sense on some level. I just don't like things like that. <laughs> like, yeah. I just like as a writer, I don't like when you do time travel, I don't like them going back and being like, well, this is where he saw that and it sat in his subconscious. And then when he became, you know, the symbiote, it's like, it's like, well, OK, well, why couldn't the symbiote just go on his body and then see that he had a spider logo and just make that on his yeah. chest like that? That's a good enough explanation for me. But I, I get what you're saying. But no, no, you're right. I, I haven't seen I watched a couple other videos on that. And I saw like one maybe person mention it, but not a lot of people. Um, but you're right. Yeah, he hits that wall and then boom, venom symbol right on the back of that jacket. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I again, like me as a, a writer and editor, I would I would probably push against ideas like that. But um, but it does uh, it does explain that, I guess, on another level for sure. Um, as long as they just retcon Deadpool being the first host out, which they kind of did now. Uh, <laughs> I like, I love Deadpool, but man, I'm like, he does not need to be like everywhere on dude, some things. Dude, that, <laughs> that, that story was funny, dude. That, it that, is that, funny though. You're right. I, yeah. You know, just, just for that alone was great, man. I mean, yeah. You know, you can't, you, you can't take it serious, dude. It's, it's no, it's, it's just fun. It's just no, fun. I know. Cause, cause to me, Deadpool has his own continuity. Cause it, a lot of it exists in his head, you know? So it's like, okay, that's Deadpool continuity. So that's fine. Um, speaking of Deadpool though, real quick plug, uh, tomorrow, the new trailer comes out for Deadpool Wolverine. So make sure you guys check that out. They're going to drop that tomorrow morning, I believe. Um, yeah. And you'll see more Wolverine in this one, I'm, I believe. So, and then yes, you and I are going to come back and hopefully Eddie's mullet, if we can get him on here. There will get, I don't want to say when I know I told you kind of before of a possibility, but I don't want to say it on here, but we'll probably be getting a venom teaser trailer at some point. And, uh, well, we will obviously at some point, but, uh, but some, maybe sometime soon. So if we do, you and I will, you know, watch them independently, but then maybe we'll come back and do another discussion video on what we saw in the teaser trailer. Um, definitely for sure. Um, something else I wanted to awesome. throw in. Um, um, all right. Oh, go ahead. Um, please. Something that I've been, telling people and i don't know if they're really recognizing but okay. ultimate spider-man uh, yeah the suit that he's wearing yes okay? all right uh -huh. here's here's the thing yeah if if people have paid attention it's symbiote like oh yeah for sure ha have you seen like how yeah it forms and yeah that's moves? oh yeah for sure and the way it changes design um <laughs> Yeah, I believe it. It is uh, it it is young Tony Stark or whatever uh, you know, uh, however whatever name he goes by, Iron Lad. Like he found um, the the makers because the maker was using that suit to to transport into the Ultimate Universe. Mm -hmm. So I imagine it went somewhere and it was part of his experiments and plan for something. And I could imagine Iron Man getting it back and retrofitting it to be you know less of what it was before and more of something that could be controlled by the user um, because that's what Iron Man does controls armor. So of course he would want this and to give it to Spider-Man. So I, I believe you and I believe that's a sound theory and I wouldn't be surprised if they reveal that in the next, you know, couple issues. I honestly believe that that suit mm -hmm. will end up becoming venom in that universe. Oh, you think so? You think they won't just do a different thing where it's, it's him. It'll be that suit. Oh, yeah. Like I said, you can see like how it moves. It, it's yeah. symbiote. It's symbiote like it can for sure change its appearance and everything. Yeah. You know, so I honestly believe that at some point that suit becomes venom. Interesting. Well, you, we all know that symbiotes, like well, the the cosmic ones, share memories. The Ultimate Universe Spider Man one, that venom was obviously created in a lab, so I don't know right. if it has the exact same abilities. But that would be neat if it had some traces of that, because uh, then when uh, over time, as Spider-Man is wearing it as older Peter Parker, he could see glimpses of the previous Ultimate Spider-Man uh, and previous Eddie Brock from that universe, um, who we never knew what happened to him. The uh, original Eddie Brock in the Ultimate Universe as he's a creeper. So I kind of don't want to see him again. <laughs> but uh <laughs> But uh, but still, I mean, you know, that makes for a good villain if you want to go that route. So, yeah, I don't know. I like that's another sound theory that maybe at some point it'll break away from him and and become Venom uh, in that universe. And, and then he has to fight his own suit, you know, again. Um, that could work, man. With way the Ultimate Spider-Man's going, I think it'll be a mainstay. And I think that, you know, that universe's Venom needs to be different than our venom agreed 100 percent agreed yep so oh. i i can totally see this happening 
Yeah. All right. Well, we'll come, we'll put a pin in that. And if that gets revealed at some point, we'll have to come back and do an ultimate Spider-Man discussion on it then. Yeah. I, I'm up for that too. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. So you haven't seen the last of me and Venom Balor here. So you guys, I want to put a link to his Twitter down below. If you want to go check it out, you can follow him on there. You can follow me on Twitter, even though I don't really go on there that much, but uh, definitely you can, if you message me within a day or two, I'll eventually get back to you. I'm just really bad about checking it. Um, but I'll put a link to everything down below so you can keep following us and stay subscribed to this channel. We'll have more Venom vlogs coming up. I have a Venom Lego episode coming up soon uh, where i'm gonna play with some venom legos uh like a little poly bag and then uh we'll have you know hopefully a teaser trailer at some point we'll have more comic book discussions we'll get back into venom vlog so thank you for being so patient with me and thank you randy for being here again today it meant a lot to come back and talk with you again dude of course man it's always fun i always <laughs> look forward to this always awesome and you guys listening thank you so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the future peace